lost and found in Los Angeles, the final part. My smaller apartment became full. Boxes of all sizes now sat in my living room. They did not move or talk to me. Shopping and unpacking and reorganizing my apartment took up all my time. But what else did I have to do? Things instead of people filled my life. Most of the people I worked with were much younger than I was. They had just finished college. They all helped to get other jobs doing what they really wanted to do. Michael wrote cream plays for movies, but he had not sold any of his screenplay yet. Joan Lily and Tuana took acting classes. They said someday they would act in movies or at least in television. And what about me? They asked. Why did I come to Los Angeles? I said I was looking for a better life to make more money and be independent. And of course you have found it, Lily said. That's great, Michael added. You are very lucky to be in the U.S. Everyone wants to come here. Later that evening, I was having dinner alone with my boxes. I asked myself, had I found a better life? I realized that I had never eaten a meal by myself before I came to America. My co-workers got you to me, and I got you to them. They often invited me to eat and drink with them after work. Lily, Michael, and Peter talked about their big plans for the future most of the time. They kept asking me, what do you really want? You mean if I had a choice, I asked. They laughed. Of course you have a choice, Lily said. It's your life, they all said together. To tell the truth, I had not really thought about my life that way. I had always done what was necessary, not what I wanted. Now, I had nothing to stop me. 
What did I really want? I could not go back to school and study nursing, teaching, business management, or art. I could read my secret poems in coffee shops all over the city. I could get a loan to open a business for African hairstyling. I could start dreaming of a future that I could decide. I could start dreaming of the future that I could design. Imagine that. 